Solar Electrical, I'm Matt Sell, Electrician's Guide to Fire Alarms. Multimeters. Previously, you might have just seen uh, the maintenance guys in the hotels you're staying in abroad these days, but uh, now you're going to have to start using them. Uh, why use it? Okay, so stuff it does. AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance. Um, we can check the hertz here. Uh, amps we can do and we can do capacitance. Um, I'm going to do little videos in each of them first of all, but I'm just going to do what's applicable for this. So checking the fire alarm panel health. In essence, disconnect the batteries, which I've just done off camera. Um, I'll do a battery run in a sec. And on here, we've got an auxiliary 24 volt supply. These have a shared um, zero, zero volt bar. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that's given us 27.49 um, volts, which ain't too bad. And then, basically, we put it into full alarm and just see if we get any kind of volt drop there. So I'm going to just go for a... Yeah. So that just drops sort of three or four volts, which is fine. Um, in essence, that, oops, sorry, I keep banging that thing. In essence, we need that alarm voltage without any backup from the batteries. Without any backup from the batteries, that can't drop more than 90%. If it does, it tells you that the PSU that transforms our 230 volt AC into 24 to 27 volts DC, that that's on the way out. Um, that's it. I found on some Rafiki and Fike panels, it goes the other way. Like you're suddenly getting 40 volts for some reason when they're on the way out. But um, yeah, so that's a panel health check. And then another thing we do, move it to there. So we've got our batteries here, right? Bear in mind, you've got multiple places to plug in here. So for voltage, ohms, hertz, you're over here. When you're measuring amps, you've got fuses in the back of this that protects it. Okay, so bear in mind of that. Oh, I don't have time. Two minutes, we've got ages. So I've made some leads specially for this. Using these because the batteries have these. So I've made a female of those. And what we're doing, these batteries are connected in series. So we put, let me just get set to amps here before I do anything else. So we're just putting our tester in series with the batteries, right? We're after 24 volts, they're two 12 volt batteries. So you put them in series, you add the voltages together. Yeah. Basic stuff you would have done at college that. that on there the um, PSU switches internally so if it detects the fact that the batteries are missing it turns off that connection right and it will auto clear the fault in a little while it does the same with if it loses mains and switches the batteries so I'm just gonna nudge that along still showing the fault no right, that fault's cleared so here we have PSU fault and system fault so that was saying that the batteries were disconnected but that has cleared itself so what I'll do now that the batteries are in play, and I'm not sure how much life they've got in them, so let's see, is I'm gonna kill the mains and the panel is still working, right? Our, it's now just using the batteries. So by having our amp meter, um, let me just silence the internal sounder, by having our amp meter in series, we can read the amount of current that's going through those batteries, i.e. how much the panel is using. We're not in alarm mode at the moment. We are just sat here waiting for fire. Everything's just ticking over. That's called quiescent mode, right? Um, so this is, if you can see that 0 0.04, sorry, yeah, 0 0.04 amps. So that's uh, 40 milliamps. Um, 
that is our quiescent load on the batteries okay and then if we put i'm just going to pull it on to max if i sound the sound is that went up to 0.085 uh, that's our alarm load right um not huge i've just got one sounder on it basically um going to reset you um and that is our quiescent load and our alarm load so if we're taking over a system um our first special inspection make sure to take those as part of your inspection those readings because that will then enable you to calculate how much or how big these batteries have to be to give us the standby time that we require um right let's get that mains back on um and that's all i'm going to do with the panel so i'm just going to use the batteries use the mains and i will do another quick video just to show the sums for the standby battery but those are two very quick health checks of the panel is our PSU performing all right? How much are we using? Um, what I'd also use, let me just fetch it from my bag. Normally the first thing I'd do um, before anything else is just check the health of those batteries. Um, we're not gonna do it on these. These are old shitty ones that I'm just using for the sake of all of this, but I've got battery load tester you might have used one on your car battery before this one will actually do your car battery because it is rated at 12 volts dc and what it does is it simulates a discharge of the batteries so if these are like seven amp hour um so i will put these on first thing i do before i do any other checks because i don't want to discharge the batteries doing something else like what i've just been doing with my um load measurements to then discharge them to then test them to say they have failed when they failed because of me, because I did all my tests in the wrong order. Um, yeah, basically, black on black, red on red, it will very quickly tell you if you've got the polarity around the wrong way. It will give you the voltage, push the test button, it will tell you how good the batteries are. Um, I might do that one day when I'm on site. Um, I'm just normally in too much of a rush. Uh, cool, I will perhaps tag a bit on the end with how the sums work. I'm trying to avoid doing edits, to be honest. Um, if I can do it without having to open a laptop, I will stick a bit on the end of this. Um, if I have to use a laptop, then I will just film it as a short and you'll just have to go look for it. Beep.